Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. Thank you for opening up your, your hearts and your minds to receive on today what we have from 3711 Pleasant, 3711 Malcolm X, Pleasant Grove, uh, Baptist Church of Dallas. I am Pastor A.A. A. Todd, amen. And we want to, to come to you today in the midst of whatever is going on in our society with this coronavirus and the different experiences that we are having to let you know that God is still in control. We want to open up this morning with a scripture and a prayer. We're going to start and we're going to read Psalms 91. It says, he that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say unto the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God. In him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the newsome pestilence. He shall cover you with his feathers and control his wings shall you trust. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. You shall not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flies by the day, nor by, for the pestilence that walks in the darkness, nor for the destruction that wastes at noonday. A thousand shall fall at your side and 10,000 at your right hand, but it shall not come near you, only with your eyes shall you behold and see the reward of the wicked because you have made the Lord, which is your refuge, even the most high, your habitation. We thank God for the reading of his word. If we will go and pray at this time, oh gracious Father, once again, God, we come to tell you thank you, God. Thank you for all that you've done for us on yesterday. Thank you, God, for what you're doing for us today. And God, we want to thank you because we know the best is yet to come. God, for all those that are first responders out there on the, on the battlefield, God, we ask that you bless them. God, we ask that you watch over them. God, we ask that you give them strength, God. We ask that you care for them, oh God. God, give them wisdom and understanding that, they, that you work through them, God, to heal. So God, as we move forth, we're asking for a blessing to fall upon every man and woman of God that are standing before you today online, God, to give out this precious word. God, we're asking that you bless them. God, give them the wisdom. Give them the knowledge also. And God, for all those that are sick, God, we ask that you touch them in a mighty way. Let it be known who you are, God. Let it be known what you can do, God. God, we give you glory. We give you honor. We lift you up. We magnify your name. In Jesus' name, let us all say amen, amen, amen. Come on, put your hands together. Come on, magnify the Lord. Come on, somebody, lift him up. Give God praise. He's worthy. The Bible says, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Somebody shout glory. glory. Amen. We're getting ready to go into praise and worship. We're going to ask that you sing along with us. Amen. God bless you. I just want to praise you forever and ever and ever for all you done. You done for me. Blessings and glory and honor, they all belong to you. Thank you, Jesus, for blessing me. I just want to praise you forever and ever and ever for all. for me blessings and glory and honor they all belong to you thank you Jesus for blessing me 
for me Blessings and glory and honor and all belong to you Blessings and glory and honor they all belong to you Blessings and glory and honor they all belong to you. Thank you, Jesus, for blessing me. Amen. We came to give God praise and glory on this morning. Amen. I know you may be watching in the bed. Maybe you're watching on your couch. You may be listening in your car. But God is worthy to be praised. Amen. This is first Sunday. Amen. And we thank God for the blood on this morning. Amen. If you know that can't nobody do you like Jesus, you ought to put your hands together right where you are. Oh, can't nobody. Do me like Jesus, can't nobody do me like the Lord, can't nobody do me like Jesus, he's my friend. Oh, can't nobody do me like Jesus, can't nobody do me like the Lord, can't Nobody do me like Jesus. He's my friend. No, he picked me up and he turned me around. Pick me up. Turn me around. Pick me up. Turn me around. He's my Oh, he picked me up, turn me around, pick me up, turn me around, pick me up, turn me around, oh, he's my friend. Guess what else he did? He healed my body, told me to run on, healed my body. Told me to run on till my body. Told me to run on. He's my friend. Oh, can't nobody do me like Jesus. Can't nobody do me like Jesus. Can't nobody do me like Jesus. Come on, sing it with me. Can't nobody do me like Jesus. Hey. Put them hands together. Can't nobody do me like Jesus. Oh, 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 nobody, nobody, no, no, nobody, no, 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 nobody, nobody, not my mother, not my father, not the preacher, not my teacher. Nobody, no, nobody, 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 because he's my friend, he's my friend, he's my friend. Can't nobody do me like Jesus. Come on, put them hands. Can't nobody do me like Jesus. Wherever you are, can't nobody do me like Jesus. No, 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 no. Can't nobody do me like Jesus. Oh, oh, oh nobody. 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 No, no, nobody. No, 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 nobody. I said nobody. 
I said, nobody, 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 because he's my friend. He's my It is a, a, a great feeling to to have the joy of the Lord on the inside of you. It is a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful moment, wonderful moment that we're able to sing songs in the name of the Lord. Amen. 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 It is an expression of of, of as I stated that. It's something about a song. Even when you are, are in the deepest of sadness, it is a song that can, can open up the depths of your heart to allow gladness to overcome the sadness that you, you have. It is, it is a song. It is a song when, when tears are falling down your eyes. You can hear the song, and as the tears fall, the frown begins to turn all around, and the smile becomes part of who you are, and the tears dry up, and laughter comes to the forefront. It is, it is a song when depression has set in about a the loss of a loved one that you can hear and the grief and the sorrow begins to turn from bitter memories of the one's loss to the happy times that one has experienced with the individual. Songs. Songs. It is words and harmony and music that come together to lift our souls, to lift our spirit. Songs, it is those words and melodies and expressions that we wish our creator with to show him that we love him, to show him that we care. It is, it is in songs that we express our thanks for all the things that God has done for us, all he's doing right now and what he's going to do for us in the future. It is songs that's used in ministry that allows the spirit to flow from me to someone else. Songs. We thank God for songs. We lift our Voices, oh, we lift our voices oh so loud that everyone may hear our joy. You may be in another room and can't see me, but you can hear my joy. That is the joy that flows through song. Come on, give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Amen. 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 We lift him up. We magnify him. We glorify his, his name. Amen. There is, there is a word from the Lord on today. A word from up on high, an encouraging word. It's short, but yet it's powerful. This word that God had laid upon my heart to release today is somewhat simplistic but yet it is major 
this word that God has allowed for us to be able to hear today is a word that allows you to communicate to God. It is a word about prayer. Oh, gracious Father, once again, as we come and as we stand before you, as our hearts and minds are open up to receive what you have, God, though we may be hiding behind the doors and the walls in the confines and in the safety of our own dwelling places, we open up, God. We open up that you may show up and do great things. God, we, we understand the situation and the type of lifestyle that has been forwarded to us at this time. But God, what it does show us that through all that's happening and through all that's going on. It increases my faith. And when it increases our faith, God, it increases our prayer life. And when our faith increases and our prayer life increases, oh God, it gives great indication that you are still in control. So, God, we lift our hands and lift our voices and say, thank you, God, for being who you are. God, we say, thank you, God, for watching over us day and night. We thank you, God, for being a 24-hour God. We love you. We adore you. We give you honor. We give you praise. Amen. Amen. Come on, come on, put your hands together for the Lord. Amen. We want to, to take you over into the New Testament, into the Gospel of Luke, the 18th chapter. And we're going to look at the very first verse of that 18th chapter. I'll read the entire verse, but our primary thought will come from the B section of verse 1 of chapter 18 in the Gospel of Luke. And it reads as follows. And he spoke a parable to them to this end, that men ought always to pray and not to faint. Let's read the B section once again. It says that men ought always to pray and not faint. I just want to give you the simplicity of a title. Keep on praying. Keep on praying. There's a devoted scientist by the name of Sir Isaac Newton. He stated, he says, I can take my telescope and he says, I can take the telescope and I can look millions and millions of miles into space. But I can lay, lay it aside and, and go into my room and and shut the door and get down on my knees in earnest prayer and see more heaven and get closer to God than I can with the assistance of a telescope or any material agency on earth. Prayer, prayer. We have to understand that prayer is not making three wishes and rubbing on a mysterious lamp. Neither is it convincing God to do our will. 
instead of his own will. Prayer is one way we express our faith. Sometimes we, we pray in faith asking God to move the mountain. And sometimes we, 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 we pray in faith, uh, as Inez Andrews would say, that, that, that we pray just for enough strength so that we may climb that mountain. Prayer itself is, is our attempt. Prayer is our attempt to communicate with God how through worship, through confession, and through petition. You will notice that I, I, I did not say the purpose of prayer is to ask God uh, to act on our behalf. But the purpose of, of, of prayer is, is through intentional uh, communication with God to get to know who God is by way of worshiping him and asking him to act in response to our request. See, the, fact, the primary focus in prayer is our relationship with God. It, it, it allows us to exercise our faith and it allows us to get closer to the creator. There, there's a story about a young woman, a young lady who learned that her, her mother was dying with cancer. That decision would, would become a source of strength to her. She said, prayer did not keep my mother from dying. But it gave me a, a, a way to be with her through the chemo and in the, in the hospital stays. It gave me a, a way, prayer gave me a way to enter into her room and, and look her in her face. It, it gave me the ability to walk in and, and rub her feet. She says that, 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 that her, 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 her faith got her through the hard times even though God chose not to remove the issues of her life. It was faith that enabled her to pray. It was faith ah, that she received through prayer. And one of the biggest mistakes that, that we make is that we stop praying. We stop praying and, and, and when we stop praying, our, our faith goes weak. Oh, Things begin to happen in our lives and we don't understand that. And, and, and there's pain and suffering and, and we stop praying because our faith goes weak. But when all is well, our, our prayers flow. Our prayers flow mixed with praise to God. But when all is not well, we, we're too tired or we're too discouraged, we're, we're too angry. I say keep on praying. When we look at this chapter, it serves as a concluding illustration to chapter 17. And it teaches, it teaches that, that, that the day of the Son of Man will, will certainly come even if there is an apparent delay. So Jesus, he encourages the disciples to keep on praying. Through this pandemic, through your isolation, through separation. I want to encourage someone, keep on praying. When you find yourself lonely all by yourself and, and there's no one to talk to, physically, keep on praying. When you get that call from someone that states that there's someone that they know that is ill, I say keep on praying. You, you, you lost your job. You're on furlough right now. I, I say keep on praying. Yes, Finances are funny. Bank account is zero. Keep on praying. The text says that men ought always to pray 
and not faint. Which says that prayer ha, is an expression of powerlessness. Well, what are you talking about, Pastor? And, and, and whatever we are praying for, I want you to know that, it, that until we admit complete defeat, and until we uh, admit that we are powerless, until we realize our, ourselves that there is nothing that we can do to change the situation, that's when we can tap into power. That's when we can tap into the power of prayer. And I want to encourage somebody out there today, don't you give up. Don't you throw in the white towel. You fall down on your knees, lift your head toward glory, and keep on praying. Come on. Mm. Why pray? Because God is our plan A. And if God is plan A, you don't have to worry about a plan B. Can I get a witness here? Text says, text says, pray. We should always pray. When we look at the latter part of this, these verses right under verse 1, it tells us of a story. It says that was a certain woman who went before a judge. And this was a judge that did not fear God, didn't have respect for man. And this widow in this city, she kept going to this judge saying, Judge, give me justice for my adversary. There are those that are pitted against me, and I, I'm coming to you for justice for what they are doing to me. The judge refused her. She was put out of the court. But when the sun rose, she came back. She came back over and over and over again to the point that the judge himself said, Listen, though I fear, not your God, though I fear no man. He said, I'm going, to re I'm going to grant your request. Not because of who you are. Not because of who you know. But I'm going to grant your request because you keep on bothering me, the judge says. I will give you justice. So that you don't keep beating me down by coming in time after time. This tells us that prayer is, 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 is not one quick session of enlisting our needs and expecting immediate results. Prayer is continually, uh, continuing to talk to God with, with persistent prayer is based on absolute faith in God. So never give up. Never give up. One thing you can be sure that God will answer your prayer. When I don't know. How I don't know. It'll be a time at his choosing. But I just want to encourage you to keep on praying. Philippians 4 and 6 said, be careful for nothing. But in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be known unto God. When I need something from God, I don't call nobody else. When I need something from God, when I'm requesting or petitioning God, I don't call my mother. When I'm petitioning God or asking God, I, I don't call my sister, my brother, my pastor. I don't call anybody, but I get on my knees and I call out to the Lord. See, I, I, I'm not looking for an answer from my mother. 
I'm not looking for a response from my brother or sister or anybody else. I'm looking for a response from God. And if I've told nobody but God, any response I get, I know it comes from God. Somebody ought to lift up your hands right now and say, Lord, it's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. Not my mother, not my father, not my brother, nor my sister. It's me, oh Lord. Oh, standing in the need of prayer. Prayer also knows that God expects us to keep on praying until the answer comes. And the prayer is a voice of faith. That's what prayer is. Prayer says, help, I need you, Lord. Can I get a witness? But the real question is, are you, are you willing to accept the answer that God gives you? See, you can't pray waiting and expecting to receive the answer that you desire. Oh. Somebody missed it right there. Too many times we fall on our knees and we pray to God and we give God our personal requests. Not recognizing or giving indication, God, if what I'm praying is a part of your will. Not my will, but thy will be done. And so in our prayers, we have to line ourselves up with the will of God. And that means pulling yourself out of the equation. Oh, no, I didn't say that you couldn't pray for yourself. But what I'm saying is that we have to pray uh, 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 in the will of God. Our, Our prayers have to be parallel with what God has planned for us. And see, when we're operating and, and, and praying and requesting and petitioning God for something that's our own selfish desire, we're operating on plan B instead of plan A. You and I, our resources are limited. There's, o- there's only so much we have that there's only so much we can do. But when you pray and you pray earnestly to God, you are tapping into unlimited resources. How, how, how can you say that? Because Ephesians says that now unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all, above all that we ask. Woo. See, see, I can't even request what God has for me because I don't don't have the understanding nor the knowledge to think the way that he thinks. I I can't even imagine what God can do according to his power that worketh in us. And even in our prayers sometimes, We limit God. We limit God because we do not think he can or he will. And so this is when our prayers grow weary because we're we're waiting on that response and, and God has yet to respond to us. Keep on praying. We're looking at our circumstances and we're falling weak. Keep on praying. The mortgage is past due, and you're facing foreclosure. Keep on praying. The power company is about to turn your electricity off. I want to encourage somebody here today to keep on praying. The repo man seems to be stalking you. Stalking you and your vehicle. I want to keep 
I want to encourage somebody that's watching today to keep on praying. Can I get a witness? We are failing because we fail to look beyond our limits. And uh, we fail to recognize the limitless abundance of God. This text said that men ought to always pray. Can I get a witness there? Y'all don't mind if I use Daniel as an example. The Bible said that Daniel would throw in the lion's den for praying three times a day. But as he was in that lion's den, he continued, to, yes he did, to pray. And the Bible said that God locked the jaws of that lion. And when that lion laid down, David laid his head on the lion as a pillar. Can I get a witness? I'm reminded of Paul and Silas in the city of Philippi. Well, they were thrown in the dungeon. Yes, they were. The Bible said that they began to pray and they began to sing. And all of a sudden, God heard that prayer. And he, yes, he did. Oh, Lord, he opened up the doors of the jail by way of an earthquake. And I'm here to tell somebody here that God will move in your life. All you got to do is keep on praying. Keep on praying. Even when Jesus was dying on the cross, he said a prayer. He said, Lord, they know not what they do. Is He died. Yes, he did. But early one Sunday morning, he got up. And when he got up, he got up with all power. He got up with all power. Heaven and earth. Keep on. Don't stop. Though the times may grow weary, you keep on praying. You may fall while you're down there. Keep on praying. Things may be rough. But keep on praying. Amen. Amen. If there's someone listening today that does not know who Jesus is, I want you to know you're watching the right program on today. If you have not formed that relationship with Jesus, you are watching the correct online streaming service program. It is at this time that you can open up your mouth if you're not saved. Confess your, your sins not to man but to God. Believe that Jesus died and on that third day God raised him from the dead you shall be saved is there one don't let this day pass you by I don't mean to frighten you but tomorrow is not promised to any of us is there one is there one stand before you pray your advice there and lift up your hands and Before tell the Lord thank you for all that he's done. Go back and
pray again. Amen. Amen. Oh, pray. That's what you should do. Oh, prayer can fix it for you. Pray, that's what you should do. Before you give up and let the devil win, go back and pray again. Oh, prayer can fix it for you. Pray, that's what you should do. Oh, prayer can fix it for you. Pray, that's what you should do. Before you give up and let the devil win, go back and pray again. Oh, Amen. 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 We're ready now to have some announcements by none other than our very own Sister Thelma Grady. Amen. Hello, Sister Grady. How you doing today, ma'am? Good morning, Pastor Todd. How are you? I'm doing wonderful. Amen. Amen. Okay. Good morning, Pastor Todd again. My first lady, how you doing? My church family and all of my sisters and brothers in Christ. Uh, these are just a little short announcements. All the minders, more or less. Remember to keep up with our Sunday school lessons. And do a little Bible study. Oh, you can call me. You know, I love to talk about the Word of God. Okay, women of worship, choir members, can't wait, can't wait. Remember to put your spare change to the side. We have much work to do when we all return. Pastor, Stop, Pastor Todd is still taking Texas. We are sending out Texas for birthday wishes, so... Text him or remind him that your birthday is coming up. Or remind me and I'll get with him. Remember our sick and shut in. Remember our sick and shut in, people. Uh, let's check on them from time to time. Oh, you can also check our email for resources that are now still available. You can uh, get those phone numbers and location by going into our website. That's PGBC3711 at Yahoo.com. Our website is PG, PG, I'm sorry, PGBC3711 at Yahoo.com. Uh, please, please, please continue. Continue to honor your financial obligation. Uh, there are several ways you may do this. You can drop off your offering at the church on Sunday mornings from 9 to 11 a.m. Or you may mail your donations uh, to Pleasant Grove Baptist Church, Post Office Box 151608, Dallas, Texas, 74215. Again, that's Pleasant Grove Baptist Church, Post Office Box 15. 1608 Dallas, Texas 75215 or you can use our cash app and uh, put up my name Thelma Grady and I will get you a donation directly into our offering or into our prison. Oh, alrighty y'all, alright. The thought for the week The soul that gives thanks can find comfort in anything or in everything. But the soul that complains can find comfort in nothing. And Pastor Todd, I was thinking yesterday evening or last night about our 2020 impact statement for the year. Yes, and I, I said, what a fitting uh, statement for such a time as this. Impact. 2020 and it's joy it's Jesus that we keep our minds on Jesus and we consider others before we consider ourselves Amen. and then we can make ourselves laugh joy only my joy you know what a fitting impact statement for such a time as this church family this is all I have I want us all to stay encouraged until we come together again may God continue to bless and keep us 
uh, have a safe week and a happy Sunday. Thank you so much. God bless you, Sister Grady. Thank you for those announcements. Amen. Just to reiterate, you all are doing a wonderful job in your giving, and we want you to continue to give. Amen. Amen. You may bring your offering to the church here between the hours of 9 and 11 on Sundays, or you can send it to our P.O. box that was given. Also, you can do Cash App where it says uh, you do the dollar sign, then T-H-E-L-M-A-G-R-A-D-Y. They are McGrady. God bless you all. We thank God for you. Now, it is our first Sunday, first Sunday in May, and we want to uh, do communion also. Amen. Amen. You, you may not have exactly what I have, but if you have some juice and some bread or some crackers, would you go ahead and, and gather those things and, and come back to the video. I'll give you just a moment. We're going to ask that Brother Ce Cecil Grace will give us some, some music, amen, while you go to the refrigerator and to gather your things. Savior Jesus Christ in him bleeding and dying upon the cross the Bible says for I have received of the Lord that which also I deliver unto you that the Lord Jesus the same night in which he was betrayed took bread and when he had given thanks he broke it and said take eat this is my body which is broken for you this do in remembrance of me After the same manner, also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do you as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Amen. Amen. Come on, give the Lord a hand clap of praise out there. Amen. I want to take a moment to uh, say that I, we spoke to a couple of folks on yesterday. Uh, our seniors, sister, brother and sister Clack, God bless you. Uh, we spoke to them. We spoke to Mother Bullet on yesterday, her and her family. We spoke to Mother Hooper on yesterday. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. Amen. Also, our very own Beverly Dotson had a birthday on yesterday, and so we had an opportunity to reach out to her and speak to her on yesterday. And and we spoke to none other than uh, our, our mother of the church that's been a mother since I've been here, Mother Ernestine Williams. God bless you. We love you. Uh, we're asking God to watch over you and your family. We do understand that your, your son... Um, is somewhat ill, and, and so we're lifting uh, him up in prayer. Amen. Also, also, let us not forget as a church family, Brother Stephen Holloway. Uh, uh, just remember him in prayer. He's still in the hospital from weeks ago when he had uh, gotten sick. So we, we want to lift him and his, his family up in prayer. And all that, that are out there today that, that are not feeling well, we're praying that 
that God will touch you and, and heal your body. Amen. What a wonderful time that we had on today. Um, let us remember that there's going to be an opportunity when we are coming out of what we call this COVID-19 coronavirus. And we want to take this time once again to invite you out to um, Pleasant Grove Missionary Baptist Church, 3711 Malcolm X, Dallas, Texas. Our services start at 10 a.m. We're usually in and out within an hour or an hour and 15 minutes. Uh, but we give God praise. We lift his name up. We give God all that we have. So it, when we leave, we're, we're ready for a nap. Amen. So we're asking you to come out and check us out. I promise you this. If you come one time, you will come back. Well, listen, listen. Thank you once again for watching us. Thank you once again for joining in. Thank you for your giving for those that gave, even those that wanted to give and did not have to give. We thank God for you. Hello, Casey Street. I'm looking at you right now. God bless you all. God bless you all. Let us do our benediction. Oh, gracious Father, once again, we thank you for the dwelling of the Holy Spirit. May the Holy Spirit that dwells in this place dwell with us forevermore. Let everybody say amen, amen, amen. Somebody shout Jesus. Somebody shout glory. Somebody shout hallelujah. God bless you. God bless you. See you next week. Love you.